All right, everybody, what's going on, people of Cherokee County? Big Matt Diamond Dean's in the house. Appreciate everybody tuning in with us today. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. Dean, what's going on with you today? Uh, not much. It's been traveling most of the day. Island Heartline, what's up? All right, let's see here. We're going Cruise to Butts to also something. watching. What's going on, people? Big Matt and Diamond Dean's Matt and Todd show. Glad everybody took some time out of y'all's day to spin with us. We, uh, we missed everybody last week. It's been kind of kind of different when you take a week off, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it's been a, I don't know, odd summer. Yeah. It ain't really been too hot. It's been a lot of rain and just. Yeah, it's trying to rain right now. We're, we're, if the if, it, if the show goes off, that's what happened. The internet has, yeah. has kicked off. and We didn't just decide to step off and yeah. quit. Yeah. No. Uh, let's see. Today. Uh, well, we got some local stuff. We've talked to the coaches this week mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to talk about some camps they got coming up uh, all around the area. And then we got some list of um, college football QBs, the guys coming back. Yeah, Dean's got some kind of list put together. We're going to talk about that. And then some of the top uh, players. Yeah, last 20 years. Yeah. 20, 25, 20, yeah. I think. And we don't necessarily agree with the order, so we'll give them in some sort of order. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, we like some of them where they're at, and we think some of them's rated too high, and some of them may be too low. Right, right. And uh, some now, of them too low. next week we'll be off again. We're gonna yeah. take our last break of the year because after that, Dean. It's, oh, I know, I know. No more breaks. It'll be uh, football and basketball, and then baseball will finish us out, and uh, that'll be when school gets out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it'll be here for you know it. We'll have plenty to do. We so. gotta go on some kind of vacation this next week. Where are we going next Sunday? Probably Bahamas. Bahamas. Yeah. yeah. We'll go down there. We got a spot to do uh, yeah. for a podcast down there. They love us down there. We announced their soccer down there yeah. on the beach. Yeah, Bahamas, Jamaica, yeah. Usain Bolt. We'll have him on. Yeah. He's one of our runners. So he gets there pretty quick. Yeah, very, very quick. <laughs> We we got it. Well, let's take our sponsors. Speaking of Olympics, hold on. When did they yeah. start? Oh, they, they'll be in that. August, right? I don't know. Okay. I They're pretty getting pretty close. All right, go ahead. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, Warrior Gym, of course. We always thank them for being around. Man, they've been around with us forever. Kevin's Line Landscaping. And Kevin's got tons and tons of stuff going on. Scott Lloyd's Legal Service up in town. If you got anything going on, stuff, go see him. And, of course, J.R. and April McKenzie. Mm -hmm. uh, very given donors to help out for the county. And uh, we always appreciate them for, for everything that they do. And, uh, and uh, Spotify, and uh, we're on YouTube, of course. we got Google Cast, uh, uh, Pocket Rocket stuff. We're on a lot of different podcasts. So if you're listening to us right now, we appreciate you guys uh, for listening. Some people have to, uh, when they're working, and I talk to a lot of people, and they're not listening. Right. You know, they can't watch. So they got to uh, listen. Yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been a good experience. We've got a lot of followers on there. We got up to about thirty or forty people now. Yeah, that's yeah. on the podcast listening to us. So we appreciate them too. I ain't never done the podcast thing myself. I'm talking about listening to one. Yeah. Do you? <clears throat> There's a college game day app on there. Uh, a guy from <clears throat> from Fox does. He does one. He does a uh, every other day. He'll mm -hmm. go on, and uh, it's pretty good. It's always informative and stuff. And of course, we like watching Josh Pate. We watch twenty four seven. He does a great job over there. I got a story. I got something to tell that he said, <coughs> yeah, go which ahead. it'll come in. Well, it's more, it's more college stuff. Yeah, it's something he said about a team. Kind of shocked me, but good. It's good stuff for him. It's just something you wouldn't expect. I'll get to that in a minute. Though. I think we may have shocked a lot of people. Last time we was on, when we did our, our own kind of top 25, we made a run mm -hmm. through it. We agreed with most of it, mm -hmm. but uh, we kind of come to the cumulative agreement that we didn't have Bama at number one. You right, know. right, yeah. No, no. Just with what they've lost, uh, they're not defending the title. They've got the, the trophies in the mm -hmm. trophy case, so they're going to be the champs for last year, and that's just how it is. Just for what they got coming back and all the new and the new coordinators, we just right. couldn't put them at one. No, I'm not. I mean, they may win it. I mean, yeah. obviously, we know there's a chance. But oh, yeah. As long as Nick Saban's there, yeah, there's always going to be a chance. Yeah, unless they just drop off and nobody goes there anymore. Yeah. Heck, he may win it then. I don't know. Uh, with all the players they have. All walk-ons. Stored up, yeah, down there. <laughs> it's like they, they couldn't recruit for a year or two, and they would still. Right, be all right. Yeah. I but I, I just don't, I don't I think I can throw them up there yet. Um. 
Well, let's see. We'll talk about first. Uh, talk about local teams. I talked to Coach Kelly out there the day, uh, and everybody knows they're getting the turf field put in out yeah, there. Yeah, that's a good deal. They got some grants and raised some money. I think the city pitched in a little bit on it, and uh, it's going to be a big thing for the county. Yeah, that's huge. Turf field. I mean, that better be the first, obviously. Yeah. And uh, well, not the first. Well, Piedmont has turf, right? Are they the only two? I guess yeah. Kansas City probably. Sure. Does. Yeah, they do. I rode by there today, and there were kids out there doing football and stuff. Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, Reggie had some picks up from the Joe show where uh, they'd been out there, and uh, Coach Ali's got them working hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They got a tough schedule. I mean, that region oh, they're in is just – It's harder than the SEC schedule, isn't it? Very, very tough schedule out there. I'm sure they're going to do a great job, and I know they miss Coach Beckett, and he's at, uh, he's at Cedar Bluff now. Oh. And uh, so – I'm sure they're gonna they'll have a good year, but that region is just murder's row. Oh yeah, it's awful. I mean, you gotta be so good. They play Spain Park and Hoover and Thompson or something, you know. Yeah. Regular schedule like games. You got Hewitt Trust Man, in there yeah. too. Oak Mountain. I yeah, mean, tough. it's just Clay Chalk. I don't know if Clay Chalk was in it. Big regions. I mean, it big a, small college like schools. It's a tough region. Yeah, very tough. <laughs> well, I talked to Coach Kelly the other day, and I was talking about the turf and stuff, and that's going good. I'm glad they're gonna be able to get that done. And uh, they had played in a, a scrimmage games against Sequoia, Pepperell, Cedartown, and Cartersville. Uh, he said the guys all played really good. They only give up, I think, two touchdowns all day. Wow. wow. So defensively, defense. yeah, uh, Witt had rolled his ankle early, so they didn't just didn't, you know, no need to chance it or play him right. any no. more the rest of the day. Uh, Cade looked great. He's really accurate with the ball. He's reading mm-hmm. defenses. He's keeping his feet moving, head down the field. Uh, Malachi and Jack and Alex, Damian, of course, and CJ uh, all had good games. Uh, they made a few mistakes, which that's what coaches notice. He's going to notice the mistakes they made, and that's, right, that's right. what you do. And you polish on those things and get ready for the season to come up at hand. So um, that's kind of what they had going on uh, this they've week. Got, they've got a tough schedule, too. Yes, they do. They like they're going to be ready for it. Yeah. I don't know, it looks tough on paper. You know, who knows? The teams may not be as good. I mean, I know somebody, I had mentioned Mumford, but then somebody told me. They beat them last lost, year. Mumford had lost some players. Aniston, so, Jacksonville. Ja- are, yeah, yeah, usually. Why not? Those are all going to be tough teams to beat. Uh, yeah, Aniston. I mean, I saw that. Somebody put a picture of that big line. Oh, my goodness, man. They got some dudes out there. They're, they're ready to. They're ready to play football. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Anderson used to be great. They've won some state championships in my life since I've been watching football. Yeah. I think one year there, I think 90, 89, they were ranked in the nation. So, I beat Cedartown 49 to nothing. Did you, you just let that sink in. That team beat Cedartown 49 to nothing. Yeah. So, that's pretty good. I mean, and their coaches, you know, the pitchers, that when uh, Bo went there and interviewed the coaches, uh-huh. uh, and the, the coaches – I mean, I'd be scared to go against whatever they. Yeah, you wouldn't. Whatever they told you to yes, do, you'd do it. I sure would. Go I get know. that wild. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. I don't want him to pile drive me through the floor. <laughs> Here's some big old guys. Uh, Ain't nobody swinging on the coach. No, they sure there. do. I bet there's <laughs> not. Yeah, I'd probably assume that that would be a no. Uh, and what's uh, Coach Knapp? I talked to Brian the other day. They're going to we're going to they're Douglas. They're going to Douglas. He's going to put in, teach him a little bit of wing tee. Of course, that's where he's where he coached. And uh, where he got his first head coaching job, stayed for eight years, and actually the guy that's the head coach now, coached under him, and was a defensive coordinator. They're going to start about eight thirty. Yeah. Said they probably be done eleven thirty or twelve. Mm-hmm. That's on the thirteenth uh, for Galesville. And uh, talked to Coach Beckett out Cedar Bluff. Looks like this week coming up uh, tomorrow they're going to be at Westbrook seven on seven and Biggs. Mm-hmm. Tuesday they're going to be at West End. Uh, get some work done. They looked good, you know, the week before they played against uh, they played against Welburn, Randolph County, and uh, what was it, Monford? Monford. Yeah. They they won all their games defensively. They they mm-hmm. played good. Uh, Jacob had some knockdowns mm-hmm. playing back there at safety, just like last year we knew. And then they're gonna finish out the week, Dean, at Wednesday and Thursday. They're gonna be at Jacksonville uh, for for full camps for day camps. So so Westbrook and West End Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Heck, I could just stay all night in Westbrook and then just shoot on over to West End that next day. Yeah. Right in the Gadsden area and then two days at Jacksonville. So they got a full plate, huh? Yeah. 
they're gonna have a full week of it wow. uh, and coach howard said they were had taken off week and uh their camp's coming up is gonna be the one at piedmont's gonna be the 24th and some other teams are also gonna be there. i think san Juan's gonna be there uh-huh. uh i had a few teams wrote down somewhere i looked at it maybe alice for or had some team coming from off was gonna come really up. yeah now uh I don't know if you knew this. I think he probably told you, but now Nap's going to have a, also have a team camp up in Georgia at a camp, Camp Hamby. But I don't know if that's next week. It's in a couple of weeks. So he's got a lot That'd be pretty soon because they'll yeah. be. It has to be, yeah, because there's just three more weeks before school. school yeah. So it'd either be, it's not this week. It'd probably be the week more, after. Week, the week after. End yeah. of the month. Yeah. Yeah, we had it when I was at Douglas with him, and like we started school the next week. Yeah, that'd be tough. No, oh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty rough. Uh, now, Coach Heath out at Sand Rock talked to him another day. They had a camp plan, I think, for Glencoe or something. And it rained it out, and they didn't get to do that, and the guys were upset about that. Uh, yeah, now they're going to be on the fourteenth at Glencoe. Uh-huh. They're going to be down there. And, of course, we talked about being at Piedmont. I think they're going to be there, too, where the Spring Guard's going to be there right, on the 24th. Right. The 24th. We've got to go to that. Uh, the OTA has been changed. They're going to do 11-on-11 11 11 instead uh, of just 7-on-7. Seven seven. And uh, so that's going to be it's going to be good practice for the guys. And uh, Brent Taylor's boy mm-hmm. there in Florida. Yeah, that's, I saw that. That's pretty that's good. sports complex. and. Naples and then Cornejo, mm-hmm. they're there together. The boys. Oh, the both of them yeah. are there. Yeah. So we got some. Uh, the rich boy plays for Cedar Bluff, though. Yes, right. right yeah. What grade he in? Seventh. No. He's a freshman this year. Okay. They're right. Okay. I Brent, knew he was young. If you're watching Brent, you can tell us. Uh, he's not driving yet. He hadn't got his. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew he was young, but I knew he went to that. I saw that, and uh, I thought Bucky might be going to it. No, I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he got to go. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the rundown for the week of camps and mm-hmm. where everybody's going. Uh, everybody's kind of got a full week. Yeah, you know? sounds like it. Uh, Coach Kelly's, they're going to be traveling off, you know, and going to camps because they don't have a field there. So right. right. <laughs> they're going to have to go off and do stuff. And Coach he has got plenty of stuff. Well, like Coach well, Beckett's got lots of stuff going oh, on. Oh, yeah, it sounds like they all got a ton of stuff. When will they be ready? When will that field be ready? I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming, obviously, it'd be ready by the – First home their game. first home game is Aniston. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. No, yes, I think that yes. Well, their first because they're playing at Piedmont this year, right? Yes, I, I think. Okay, yes. so I think I remember us looking over the schedule. You know, talking about that. Their first region home game. We picked that game. It was Aniston. Mm, okay, I think you're right. And that was August the right. second week, of August second or third Friday of the month. So right, right. So I have to be ready for them. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it won't take long. It just depends on the weather, I guess. I can't wait to see them fly up down the field, Damien and, and Whit and Malachi and Jack and everybody. Uh, turf is so fast. A lot of the kids, mm-hmm. a lot of kids, if you talk to them, um, that's played on some turf don't really like it because you, you can get scuffed up. You know, yeah, that turf will yeah, burn yeah. the back of your elbows and stuff. And, uh, it's different, huh? Yeah, ground's got a little more, uh, a little more leeway to September it. September 10th, 2nd. First home game. Okay. Yeah. Oh, was that Bubba? Okay, yeah. That's Bubba. September? September 10th. Okay. Yeah. So that'll give them a couple of weeks to. Yeah. They got Piedmont and, and another game so or I two. I guess they'll play two games, two or three, and then play yeah. at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Thank you, Bubba. Or Lisa. Uh, I don't know which one. <laughs> they, they both on there. It's right. one of them. Right. Uh, well, we'll break into some college stuff. We get, I knew it wouldn't, you know, we ain't got a whole lot of stuff. There's just not a lot going no, on right now. No, there's with, just not. With, oh. with camps, and we put up some stuff, and, and, uh, and the coaches are, I don't want to pin a coach down on interview right now because they're, no, they're running they're, crazy trying to do finish the camps. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to finish strong and get ready for the year to get started. So we ain't trying to pin them down, bring them in here for interviews or nothing. I, I talk to them and text them or something, see how it's going, but. Right, right. Well, before we move into football, I guess we mentioned it. We didn't got to go into depth, but I know game three of the NBA Finals is tonight. Phoenix up 2-0. Yeah, I uh, think that's going to turn Phoenix's way, I think. I, I don't think we have anybody from any of our respective schools here, Auburn or Alabama, on the team. They're not playing regular. I know Booker went to Kentucky. I don't know where Gian, Giannis played. Yeah, he, he was overseas. Oh, okay. Him and his brother were from... 
France or something. I don't think Germany anybody. and but it's interesting. Two different teams for sure. You know. Yeah, and Giannis is not. Uh, he's not one hundred percent. You can tell by the way they're playing. Yeah, he had a good game the other night, but the other people didn't. Yeah, or didn't have as good a game. So, but that's interesting. To two zero, that's something else going. There's not a lot going on in the sports world. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's why we'll be off again. Like we said earlier, before manager, we'll be off again. Our our last day of vacation mm-hmm. next week. We'll we'll uh, we'll take off and uh, we'll be back. We got a visitor. <laughs> we'll be back around uh, the next week, and uh. That'll be about it, and once August gets started, and you know school and all that stuff's gonna be going on, and you'll be when do y'all no, start back? August second. Yeah. Start playing. Of course, we play on Tuesdays. I think we play the seventeenth of August. So we'll play seventeenth, twenty fourth, thirty first. Be off a week, and then play the fourteenth, twenty first, twenty eighth. We'll be done. We'll be done for. Y'all gonna be good. Y'all gonna be like last year. Y'all gonna win it this year. No, we got us twenty one starters. Oh, okay. You got twenty two starters. And on you the, got a new coach. Was Coach Bullen? Coach. Uh, step, I mean, they may be good. Coach Bullen stepped down, retired, and he's. I don't know if I've ever saw a. Uh, and the head coach there with you now is the guy from Fort Payne. Fort which Payne. Was, he was Fort Payne's coach, Paul Ellis. Ellis, yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen a team lose. I mean, all eleven starters gone on defense. <sighs> Ten on offense. One tough, one lineman back. But the good news is uh, most of the guys coming in are young. They're just seventh graders. Well, next year or two, so then y'all be they good again. Be good again, yeah. I mean, they may be fine this year. What about quarterback know. play? Who y'all are you going? Uh, we don't know yet. I don't really know yet. Uh, I know the varsity at Chattooga, uh, It's I think they're doing a dual system there. Brent Mobb's boy may be yeah. one of the quarterbacks, Brody. Yeah. And the boy I told you about, the freshman that was so good last year, Nick Hester, uh, I think he's getting some reps at quarterback. So, of course, they've got a running back that's going to be – it's a D1 prospect, LaShawn Lester. So, it'll be interesting. He comes in this year with 4,000 4, – 3,500 career yards. Lester. Yeah. Okay. So, he's Youngstown State's looked at him. UAB's looked at him. I don't know where he's going. That's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, so they're expecting him have a better season. Well, we'll see how Chattooga Middle School turns. Who's going to win that region? Who's going to win y'all's region and probably pay for it? I think they've got everybody back. I don't know. I, I don't know. I talked to some basketball coaches and everyone I'm on talk to is like, we lose everybody. <laughs> I'm like, well, how can everybody lose everybody? So the high school is going to have a bunch of new kids coming in. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't know who's supposed to be unstoppable up there in that area this year, really. In hmm. middle school or high school. I know high school, Pepperell's supposed to be pretty good, I think. They've got a real good running back. Rockmart, they got a, a running back coming back this year, too. I read about him oh, really? the other day. Yeah. Oh, just a, just yeah. a stud. Yeah, he's going to be, they're going to be good again. Well, in Cedartown, too. You know, yep. they've got two D1s. They've got new the coaches field. and coaches stuff going on. And mm-hmm. then big time running backs. The quarterback had a, some kind of good year, you oh, know, man. set some record or something. And, but the only thing about in Georgia, with the school bigger schools like that, you know, we talk about Cedartown having two backs that are going to play college. They may play somebody where all three of them's going to play college. Yes. So, if you had never experienced a um, Georgia high school football, uh, make a run out there to Cedartown one night. We went. We've been a couple of times. Yeah, we've been twice, two or three. Actually. Yeah, and every time it's uh, yeah. standing room only at the fence, and if you if you get there early. It's still standing room. You may get to sit down somewhere down in the front on the end of the bleachers. Right. Uh, the bands is jumping. The atmosphere is great, especially this year coming back. People are really going to be excited about football. So, you know, if, if our teams ain't playing around here, yeah, we got a free weekend of some sort. Uh, run up there at Cedar Town or Rock Martin. Check mm-hmm. out. A, yeah, yeah, some good balls up there. Man, yeah, big big schools. Lots. Of, I mean, the campus looks like a college. This building here, that's the math building. Yeah. Four levels. That that's oh, that's a science building. That's and yeah, you, know, you think we think it's the high school? No, that's that's no, just that's elementary. Just one department. <laughs> of the, it's amazing over there. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about college stuff, and this is not in really any kind of order. Uh, and we don't agree with. No, we, we like either. the names on the list, yeah. but we're not crazy about maybe the order. We'll start out at number fifteen. You got to mention the guy that threw 7,800 yards, sixty-three touchdowns. He was like one of the top 
uh, quarterbacks in in the nation to throw 3,000, rush for 1,000. That's just Johnny football. You know, I, I actually expected him to be higher on that list. Yeah. Uh, he was pretty dominant. But, you know, they didn't. I mean, they went 9-4, and 10-3. Yeah. and three. Uh, You know, in this day, we, if they lose, it counts against you. Yeah, if you're not winning 80s. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, he, he was pretty excited. Now, I who, enjoyed it. Who's the next guy on the list? Uh, Baker Mayfield. Do you, know, do you like him being that? No. See, I, I don't mind him being on the list. I, mean, I don't mind he was. On. He was fun to watch, you know. He had. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I top. This is a top sixteen list. Yeah, sixty-eight percent right? passer, fourteen thousand passing yards. You know, as as a player there. Fourteen thousand. Yeah, thirty picks <laughs> and a thousand rushing. I might change my mind. One hundred thirty-one touchdowns. He was a walk-on too. You know. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, maybe I didn't realize his stats were. I mean, I thought he was great. Oh yeah, he was fun to watch. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean. I'd put him maybe at 16, or where Johnny Manziel is, or the last on the list, you know, a 15 on the list. Well, you got a, a, the next guy throw 27 picks with 4,100 yards rushing, 9,000 passing. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that's Lamar Jackson, and everybody can see him playing in the NFL still. Oh. He's a fun to watch. He'll take the ball down. We've seen highlights of him play high school football. Oh, I agree with him 100% uh, yeah, on this list. Yeah. And I actually think he ought to be a little higher than 13. Yeah, I could go along with that. And who you got at 12? 12, Ed Reed. Well, I, I, he's got – top for me, he's top five. I yeah. mean, we're talking about – Ed Reed was a freak. Yeah, he was good. I agree with him being somewhere. I don't know. He's a defensive player, obviously. Yeah. But uh, 21 interceptions in college. Four defensive touchdowns. Uh, just getting after the quarterback and making their, their life a, a, a living nightmare. A uh, few players at this list were ever in, impactful as Reed was at the NFL level. He was the 100th anniversary all-team, all-time team. Oh, yeah. yeah he, was the, better. he was great in the pros. I mean, I'm not saying he <coughs> wasn't great in college. He was, obviously, 21 interceptions. Yeah. Um, just his energy, mm-hmm. uh, the way he played the game, how he held his teammates accountable, mm-hmm. uh, those kind of things are, are hard to find you know, right, anymore right. the way they played then. Uh, what years was he there? Oh, two, uh, what? one, two, three, or Ed Reed? Hey, oh, yes, yes, yes. 90, 99 to 98 01. to 01. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was. Yeah, he was one of the first ones. I I take it this is in the last 20. Yeah, five, 20 years. Since, 20 years. Since, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he would have made, barely made this. Right, year. yeah. He's definitely one of the OGs. Derrick Henry's on the list next. 602 carries, 3,500 rushing, 42 touchdowns. Stephen yeah. caught 17 catches. I agree with him uh, being on the list. His only season as a starter was 15, rushing the nation's best school record, 2,100 rushing yards. He had 270 yards, 46 carry game performance against Auburn in the Iron Bowl that year. 46 carries. Yeah, that's amazing. So that sounds uh, like a season. I know. Yeah. I remember that game. They just and he just like he never got tired. I mean, he just he ain't breaking a sweat. He just, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Who you like next on there? Got Deshaun Watson next at ten. I think he ought to be a little higher. Just I mean, he was just ten thousand passing yards. Good. Ten thousand. And obviously they won it. Yeah. I right. don't have a problem with him being on this list at all, and I actually think he ought to be a little bit higher. Ninety touchdowns. Uh, his two performances in the postseason against the nation's standard during 2015-16 season will never be forgotten in Clemson lore, and right now he stands as a top player in program history. But Lawrence has had definitely made a, a bump into that too. Right, right. Uh, next is Domakong Su. We watched him play. He's a defensive guy. He was a force to be reckoned with. The guy had 215 tackles. Yeah, a lot of tackles uh, behind the line. 24 sacks. Yeah. Four picks. I don't know if a defensive <laughs> player has ever been more dominant than him uh, in the last 20 years. So The game against Texas, of course, we remember a Colt McCoy. Uh, if we got after him, sacked him 4.5 times as registered from the line of scrimmage previously. Uh, in 2009, Gator Bowl, Sue helped sweep away Clemson during Dabo Sweeney's first season with two sacks, four stops, and losses, and blocked a field goal. Uh, we'll rewind there just for a second, and we'll talk about the game against Colt McCoy when the winner of that game, uh, of course, went on to play Alabama for the, the right. championship and game. and they, they put a second back on the clock. I'll never forget the Colt's eyes when he threw that ball away over there on that sideline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was over. And the game's over. I'll never forget the camera going to him close up, and he was going – his eyes were like, we lost. Mm-hmm. We've lost the game. But the refs decided different. They won a second. Put a second back on. Won the, the game. Win the game, going to play Alabama, and he goes out with a 
uh, hurt. I didn't like it. Stinger on his arm. I did not like it at all. Now here's another guy, Dane. Your next guy, he's just barely made the list by years. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, he's a legend in his own right. Yeah, they kept talking about him going to be one of the, which he wouldn't have been the first receiver to win the Heisman, but there was really a big push for him to win the Heisman at Pitt. And, uh, he won the Blitnikoff and stuff, 22 touchdown reception, uh, had 161 catches in his career. You know, I got one question, though. That's great. Who was his quarterback? Uh, let's see here. I, know, I don't have Ward. a clue. However, the ununanimous All American selection was the runner. He was the runner up Oklahoma quarterback Jason White. Jason White won the Heisman. The Heisman. But I mean, who? I don't never know. I've never known who Larry Fitzgerald's quarterback was. Uh, Fitzgerald's number in 03 rivaled the Alabama wideout Devontae Smith from last season. Smith became the first passing catcher to win the Heisman uh, since Larry. Of course, he's next on the list. Mm-hmm. Devontae Smith, 235 wow. catches, about 4,000 yards, 46 touchdowns. What a career. He, what a year. He won a uh, trophy of recording 117 receptions for 1,800 yards his last season. Uh, he won everything that you can't even list all of. Oh, oh, he won he, everything. Him and the next guy we're talking about have had probably – and Barry Sanders. The it, most historic one. One year. Yeah. For, yeah. Just come in, just made a splash. Yeah. Uh, and Joe Burrow. Yeah, he's next Number on. six, which arguably one of the best seasons in college football history. Yeah. Matt thinks he should have made the list, but yeah. maybe been a little lower. I don't agree with him at number six. Season. No, maybe I'd, a little lower. Maybe 10 or 11. Yeah. 12 maybe. I mean, he he had that great year, though. 8,800 yards passing, 76 touchdowns, mm-hmm. 11 picks. Uh, he threw 945 balls, 650 of them was for catches. Uh, his QBR, Mac Jones just aged him out just a little on QBR percentage type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't throw, uh, Mac didn't throw as many, as, 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 as for many yards as Joe did. No. Uh, next on the list, Dean is. Well, is, they didn't play as many games either. Right. Adrian Peterson. Next. Yeah. I mean, seven, four, 748 career carries, 4,000 rushing, 41 touchdowns. Uh, he had such a good freshman year. Yes. He never did really duplicate that again, but uh, I guess he's worthy of the list. I'm obviously an unbelievable pro. Uh, one of the best running backs ever played. Pro football. He got bumped out of the Heisman that year by Matt Liner. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Which Matt Liner was deserving. Yeah, he was a good college player. Yes, he was. Well, they had a good team, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that USC team. Yeah, Pete Carroll. And those receivers and. Yeah, was 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 Ogeron out there at that time? No, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he was at Ole Miss then, or I, I, I can't remember. That's a good question. No, I don't think so. I think that was just oh, but now Orgeron was a position coach. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, he was like he a line coach or something. I don't know if he was there then or not. That's a good question, actually. Does uh, anybody know that? Yeah, uh, referred to as the person, the recruit that got away. What Mac Brown said about Peterson, he mm-hmm. he really wanted to get him. Uh, be part what year did he play though? Oh uh, four to oh six. To see you say that, but then you won one during while he was there. I mean, here's my point. Mac Brown's taking heat because Peterson didn't come to Texas, but Texas won a national championship while Peterson was at Oklahoma. Well, the guy that we hadn't mentioned yet. Yeah. Well, yeah, which so you know he's on the list, and we haven't named him yet, so you know he's pretty high. Four is Cam Newton. Another great one year. I don't necessarily agree with him being so high on the list because of the one year, but that's probably what, the list worth it. That's what darts it for me. Like Joe Burrow, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you just have this one hit season, how could, I don't, you're going to say he's like some of the best college player in the last 20 years? Yeah, you're going to give somebody who had one, played one year. Uh, yeah. But uh, Bo Starkey said that Orgeron was there. He was there, yeah. I mean, he was a line coach. He had a small part in that, you know. Right, right. Small, real small mm-hmm. part. Uh, Cam, 2,800 yards passing, 30 touchdowns. Uh, you can't deny what he did. He rushed for 150 yards in six different games and lit up the SEC defenses through the air, completing passes at 66%. He broke numerous single-season records, leading scores, for it's probably set by Tim Tebow. Mm-hmm. And we ain't got him yet either. But next on the bush, the part of that liner group, Dean, is... Reggie Bush. I agree with that. I mean, he's took a lot of heat. Oh, and Bo Starkey wants to know what we're up to. We're having a good time, Bo. Yeah, just... We're just trying crazy to... Crazy and working all week. Keep this thing afloat right now. Yeah. It's hard, but... Yeah. When there's not a lot of... 
Well, not a lot of football going on, and basketball mm-hmm. usually would not be going on. NBA. Uh, and uh, baseball. I, we don't do a lot of baseball. I don't know a lot about baseball. I do know Acuna got yeah. hurt. But yes. I, I hate to see that. Yeah. Because he's one of the great young talents out there. But, okay, back to Reggie Bush. I'm sorry. We're doing good, though. 433 carries, 13 touchdowns. Uh, of course, the famous Bush push play mm-hmm. pushes Matt in, you know, 8.6 yards per carry. He also caught 37 passes for 478 yards and two touchdowns while averaging 17 yards a kickoff return. Yeah. You just forget how great he was. Oh, yeah, he was. I agree with him at number three. Not two or one, but number three, yes, I agree with that 100%. NCAA vacated their wins later on because of some stuff that he got into, which is now legal mm-hmm. to do in college. So right. that's the question – uh, for you guys, what do you guys think about this new NIL deal? And please, you can put it on there. You know, good idea, bad idea. Uh, Dean, what do you? What's your opinion on this? Since we brought up Reggie Bush, uh, you know, what's your opinion on on this? Well, see, name, I don't understand it completely. Name, image, likeness. Uh, you know, basically, the the kids can um, they could sell their self to to a place to where they could make some extra money. I don't guess it's a bad deal well it's good for the kids I like them being able to have some extra money in their pocket yeah they need some I hate they're not going to get rich doing this right uh well I, you maybe could I guess but I don't know I'm just afraid yeah at some point they're just not going to have no use for college football yeah we're afraid that maybe. what this does it, it, on pro or... it opens a box yeah or I'm I, hey I made pretty good I'm just going to give it up I, I mean I guess that's possible that may be silly to say but that, that, uh eh. I don't have a. I don't. I just. I hate the the bad part is, and and we've talked about this that to kill Spike story, you know. I hate when kids are going hungry after they just played a big time football game and the school just made tons of money on them and they don't have any food to eat in their room. That that's just not right. Yeah, I agree with that. Have you seen that story that buy on to kill Spike? Yeah, yeah. That just. I mean, how do you? I just don't like. I don't think. I don't. I don't like people having to be hungry, mm-hmm. especially when they're playing a high-profile game that they play, and uh-huh. they give all their best, you know, we should be able to help them in some way to at least be able to feed them where they get a card where they can go down to the diner on the campus and right, eat, right. grab a hoodie, grab some slides, get packs of underwear and socks, girls and guys, all. Oh, uh-huh. Yes, know, yes, all of them. Kids shouldn't be hungry. There's no reason for anybody to be hungry on a campus where the head coaches are making four, five, six, eight, ten million dollars. That 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 really bothers right. me. Right. That's but what bothers me. Maybe it should not, not make them too much. Though. Yeah, you know, just a, some pocket money. I don't know. I yeah, I don't want to get into that debate. I mean, I understand. I'm not talking about with you. I'm talking about with other people. I'm not crazy about it. But. I'm not really. It it worries me because this kind of thing, even in in politics, when you start doing little things like that, it opens up a box and allows other things well, to start. Allows happening. individualism to come in. Yeah. I don't think. Somebody said the other day they're afraid that people are going to get jealous. I don't think that'll happen, but it may get a player focusing more on himself than... Not being a team sport right. thing. Yeah. It could possibly. It's, and not all kids. Maybe. maybe. Uh, some kids will handle it better than others. Right, they will. But Reggie Bush getting some money never made him run faster. I never agreed with them taking the Heisman the day that they did it. I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't take the wins away, okay. Yeah, I understand okay. that. But to take his trophy, he earned that. Yeah. Off his feet, off his back, his sweat, his blood for the school. His, right. He played his high school career, worked his whole life. Uh, he was a like, he was a good NFL back, you know, yeah, playing, playing the Saints. Good. And him he and wasn't England. as dominant as he no, was in college. He, he was good. Wasn't. Yeah, he was a good player. Uh, man, I hate to interrupt. Mm-hmm. Jason Howard said, Ragman, Pleasant Valley, and Gaston are coming to Spring Garden Tuesday at 9. Cool, all right, yeah, good. I bet Tuesday at 9... Yeah, no, Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And I will but send us pictures, Coach. Howard. Absolutely, yeah, please do. No, I mean, he has to work, and I'll have football practice. So yeah, we will not be able to attend. But we, yeah, if we got somebody over there. Uh, yeah, please. We got plenty of spring garden uh, help. Just shoot some pictures, throw them up on the page. I mean, you can go on our page and load them. That's fine. Yeah. That's great. Send them in. I'll add some captions to them, and uh, always and anybody while we're on that topic. If you're at any of the sporting events around this county or anywhere, right, right. 
shoot me some pictures. You can send it to me on Messenger, my personal Messenger, and I'll make nice captions for them and put some stuff in there. And I'm glad to share because we can only do so much. And right. if we had other volunteers out there, we volunteer our time for free. Uh-huh. If you'd like to volunteer a little bit of your time instead of complaining about something not getting done, volunteer your time like we do uh-huh. and uh, just be a doer, not a sayer. And complainer, right. just you could throw some pictures on there. And, and y'all are welcome. I mean, that, that side note show is so I made it for. Right, to right. share news and, and the community could put stuff on there and people could talk about games and uh, schedules could be posted on there it's to keep the county informed of games and times and we want to share pictures and videos of kids mm. at camps we're going to turn down nothing absolutely not anybody boys and girls whatever we right, right. we enjoy it. this is for the county that's why we want to do this um, you're next on the list there Dane is your guy I mean, we, everybody knows this guy. Vince Young. I had to look and make sure. 6,000 yeah, yards two. passing. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, 44 touchdowns, 28 picks, 3,000 rushing yards, 37 of those were touchdowns by rushing. Oh, wow. He was awesome. Had uh, 3,000. How many seasons did he have 3,000 yards passing and 1,000 rushing? Did he do that two or three times? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, how many yards did he have in college? He threw for... 9,000 yards of total offense and 81 touchdowns. Yeah. Seeming his status as one of the greatest all-time college rankings. I think his story was so great. I think he hit it at a good time. Uh, college football in those those few years there was kind of at a little uh, leveling off spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and his story was good. He was very quiet. He was very humble. And the big machine was USC, kind of like Alabama is now at this day. Mm-hmm. And they kind of come in there and swooped them right off and knocked them off. And he just played – Effortlessly, he just yeah. looked like he wasn't even trying. He scores I he was great. Trotted in the corner of the end zone there, and he just looks like he's just walking around on the field. He's my. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's my number one on. Uh, I'd have him last win. twenty years. He's my. To me, he's the greatest college player of the last twenty years. After finishing second to Reggie Bush in 2005, Young took it personal, almost single-handedly beat USC in national championship game with a memorable drive with the game-winning touchdown run in the final moment, which we just talk about. So. Uh, uh, I like Vince. I mean, his his story was great. Now, uh-huh. pro wise, he turned to do really nothing. He wound up going to the Titans. Uh, they drafted him, and he did a little better than I thought. Though I was expecting, from what I'd heard, that he just absolutely did nothing. He didn't do great, but he. I mean, he wasn't he, pitiful. You've seen it. It was there. The great, but yeah. he never. He had some mental issues going on from things that I had read and, and watched uh, about his parents and mm-hmm. something was going on, personal issues and that turned into a, a big problem, which that happens when you go from small town USA, he seemed like a real modest shy kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Like he just didn't really like the interviews, he didn't like the spotlight when he went pro and after this, I mean he's one of the greatest you know college football players of all time mm-hmm. I think it just kind of mentally handicapped him, he just wouldn't Right. Sure, how to handle it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could either. I'm not, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. They threw him in there in the pros in the same category as Jamarcus Russell. And guys, I'm not going to talk bad about Jamarcus Russell, but their stats aren't even close. Vince Young did 10 times better than Jamarcus Russell yes. did in the pros. Yeah. So the, I, I just don't like them being thrown. You know, I look at stats and stuff a lot, and I was just under the impression that. He did horrible, like Russell did. Russell really did do bad. Yeah, he never. never and Young did not. He didn't do good, but Russell, he wasn't just terrible. He never blossomed. To, he no, never, he never did blossom. But they're not in the same category. Not even close. Number one is your favorite guy, Dean. He's, <laughs> Tim T. Yeah, Bob. my heart and yours too, and the Lord. And, and uh, God bless Tim. He's spread the word of God by putting Bible mm-hmm. verses on his, uh, his eye stickers and uh, and most importantly of all, that's always more important than the game, and it always has been to him. And the way he mm-hmm. played the game, the way he handled himself in a lot of bad situations, he got a lot of negative spotlight. Even for taking a knee on the field and praying, he was frowned upon for that mm-hmm. sometimes. But uh, it was great. 06, 2009, the guy won titles there in yeah. Florida. They had a fantastic football team around him from that Hernandez runs right, to all right. the. The, uh, the twins, the Pouncey twins, and those mm-hmm. guys are old rough guys. They were great offense, defense. Uh, I, I mean, I agree with him being on the list and even in the top five. Now, me yeah. personally, I would reverse him and Young. That's just me. 9,200 passing, 88 touchdowns, 16 picks, almost 3,000 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. 
and 57 rushing touchdowns. Uh, I mean, he has to be on the list. Oh, yeah. He's great. There's Tebow no became the first sophomore ever to win the Heisman 2007 uh, after obligating previous league records with uh, 55 total touchdowns at the time Tebow finished the regular season as the only player in FBS history to rush and pass for at least 20 touchdowns in the same wow. season. Wow. See, I thought he did better his junior year. They lost four games his senior, that, the year he won it. So that does away with that theory that you have to win them all. Which yeah. seems to be what uh, kind of a way it is now, a little bit. And the Bama game where McElroy just, Greg just, he outplayed him. As a quarterback, mm-hmm. that I mean, the SEC yeah, the game, man, uh, Greg just, and Greg's not even a pro player, and, and he's not near the athlete Tim Tebow is, and he right. said that himself. He's like, no, I'm not. I mean, Tim can play baseball; he can do everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg just had a good day to be good. Yeah, that Bama team was special. You know, uh, there's no shame in losing that ball game, but no. uh, they were a little better that year. I thought that Florida was better the year before because they had Harvin. Yeah. Percy Harvin and Tebow. So I still, I always thought that team was a little bit better. I'm not saying I think Alabama could have beat the team the year before, too, you know, had that 09 and 08 Florida played. I know they didn't beat them, but uh, I thought the 08 team for Florida was better with Percy Harvin, the yeah. one that won it. Yeah. Yeah. And Percy turned out to be uh, pretty good at pro yeah. level, too. Yeah, he did. Uh, now we got a. Uh, we got uh, about 15 minutes left, so we got plenty of time okay. to do the, the quarterbacks five. that's coming coming back. And of course, we can mention, you know, I guess Bryce. I mean, you talked about talking about him. He's not returning, so yeah, I don't understand I, that really. But uh, I mean, I can see him. Uh, he lets go of the ball great off his hand. Um, I, he's just so small. He just worries me. Wait, just... The offense worries me if. You know how uh, how he's going to be able to, to to make gaps in the line for him to have lanes to throw the football. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Bryce Young. Right. Uh, now with JT Daniel coming back, I'm sure it's going to be okay. And LSU's guy, who was he? Uh, he he's coming. He wasn't back. one of the ones listed. He's not. So yeah. Uh, well, here's the top five. Okay, Matt Coral. Yeah. Is number one. Ole Miss. Thirty-eight hundred yards of offense. Let me pull it up here. I'm not even looking at it. All right, thirty-eight hundred yards of offense. Pretty good. And you got a great play caller as the head coach. Yes, great play caller. Daniels is two. Average. He only played in four games. Yeah. And really, they're the only two coming back. Yeah, I'm just I not. Mean, I don't know if I'm settled on, on JT. Right. Dang it. <laughs> and uh, what happened there? I hit my knee on the table. Oh, God. God. <laughs> Cut it off. Uh, oh, we'll, do knee, we'll do knee surgery on here next week. Oh, yeah, get my knife out. <laughs> Hey, we're running out of stuff, so, you know. We're going to have to do knee surgery next week. <laughs> uh, but Daniels is two. He averages three. Here, I got, I got it now. Three. He averages 300 yards a game. Bryce Young is number three. This is preseason. Oh, um, oh. And uh, Connor, I cannot pronounce this, Belzadak. That sounds great. Belzadak uh, from Missouri. And that's what Josh Pate said. He said, you better watch out for them. They're going to be good. And they've got an easy schedule. He said Missouri is very uh, unsung. You know, they play for the SEC championship twice. Yes, they'll, but they're going to have to beat Florida or Georgia to, to, well, to well, he said win the East. To, now, this is what Josh Pate said and another guy. I heard this yesterday or Friday. He said, instead of asking if Florida can beat Georgia, you better ask if Kentucky and Missouri are better than Florida. That's more of a question to me, to him. But uh, this quarterback's ranked fourth, and, of course, Bo Nix fifth. They only did the top five. And I don't really agree with Nix being fifth. I agree with him maybe being fourth. I don't know. I would think Young at five. Yeah. Since he don't even have any experience. Yeah, Bo would seem like I'd have him at three or four. Three, Since he has played. Yes, he started two years. Now, they are coming under new offensive schemes. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're going to be doing – a lot of different stuff out there, and we watched Auburn spring game. I watched it twice. Um, there's a lot of um, checking at the line. I've noticed it's different instead of them running to the line and calling a, a color for a scheme, and mm-hmm. then they turn and look to the sideline for Gus to call in a play. Well, now uh, ain't Bobo there? The guy from Georgia, he's Bobo's their offensive coordinator out there. So uh, they got a new coaching staff. Um, he's at Auburn. I think so. 
Yeah, so changed so much. Yeah, this off season has been the wildest coaching change. Uh, even uh, in high school around here, I mean, there's new coaches oh, flying wow. around everywhere. Been, Baseball's got Spring amazed. Garden and Sand Rock. Coach Short is it? Yeah, it is. I did not know that. You taught me something there. I yeah. did not know he was. So, I don't think he's a bad offensive coordinator. I don't like him. I never liked him. I know Georgia fans are not crazy about him. Never liked him. Offensive coordinator, but I don't think he'll be that bad. Of course, you know who Derek Mason's their defense coordinator. But, uh, yeah, I would have swapped Young and Nix, put Nix at three, Young at five. I just wouldn't. I can't give Young the third best quarterback coming in. Never seen him play. Conference. I mean, I can give it to Coral, of course. I, I mean, mean look, I had thirty eight hundred yards. When the ball comes out and and he rolls out of the pocket and 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 he may be great. He, he makes good decisions with the ball. The eight day game, you know, we're looking out there and he's playing hard. And the ball comes out quick, and he keeps his feet moving. His head's down the field, and yes, he's playing against. Uh, he played against the first team defense there at Bama, but you just don't agree with him. Todd, we've never seen him play against anybody. No, no, I don't know how you can put him number three. But that's why that's why they do that stuff to create a buzz. Yeah, and I think that's to me that's offensive to Bo Nix and Missouri's quarterback to me. I mean, he ain't played a down. Yeah, he played some in mop up, but uh, he's not even a starter, and you put him above. Well, talking about Florida, while we're on that Florida kick, I will say something about uh, Florida and Bama. The game is going to be um, at Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's at Gainesville. Mm-hmm. Now. Now, don't get your pen and paper out or don't hit the record right now and say, well, Big Matt said Florida's beating Alabama. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying because the game's been played at the Swamp, that's a very special place to play college football. It's tough. And this year that we're coming out of mm-hmm. and the things that Dan Mullen, he loves to pump the crowd up, I'm saying it's going to be a tough crowd. It's going to be a, a, a tough road game for Bama with the new coordinators and new offensive players. Bama's not going to go to Florida and hang 40 on them. Just, you can write that down now. You can quote me on that. Bama, right. Bama is not going to go hang 40 on Florida. 40 on Florida. That's not going to happen. So if Florida can keep it interesting and keep it close, they may be able to punch out a big play here there and make it close. Right. Onside could. kick. That's going to be an interesting game. A fumble. Yeah. A pick. Uh, a Bryce rolls out of the pocket. You know, they're up 14 to nothing. And he rolls out, and the defense line slaps the ball out of his hand. They scoop and score. Well, it's fourteen to seven. Right, right. I'm not picking Florida to win. Okay, so right. let's just be Florida's careful. Florida's winning. They're going to win the title. They're winning. All. So I'm Tyler not, Blaylock, Florida's beating Bama. Yeah, they're, you heard it here. I'm not doing that, but no, we're not. We're not. Just that's going to be mark that on your calendar. Just put a little circle. Could be an interesting game. Yeah. Uh, just don't be surprised and say that we told you so. That game may be a little closer than you think it's supposed to be. Tyler Blaylock, I coach with him at Chattooga. He's watching, huge Florida fan, big Tim Tebow fan. He's probably not real happy with me right now because, you know, I jumped young over Tebow. Tebow's still two for me, Tyler. But, oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking about, uh, honestly, we're threading needle, and it's just, yeah, it could go either way. But now we'll see what he thinks. He was telling me the other day that Emory Jones is going to be their quarterback. And then for those of y'all that don't know, Emory Jones coaches – now, this is how small of a world it is. Emory Jones, offensive coordinator and quarterback coach in high school, played his ninth grade year at Yale. Really? Yes. <laughs> he played his ninth grade year at Galesville. And what year would that be he was at Galesville? That would have been 80. Oh, okay. We're talking about. No, 80. 89. 1989. So, yeah, Florida's quarterback. The quarterback at Galesville in 89 coached Florida's quarterback in high school. Small world. There you go. You heard it here first. I got another Galesville tidbit. One of the starters for the Phoenix Suns, Deddy, played for Coach Knapp's Deddy in high school. Small world, really. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that too many? This Coach Knapp coached the boys' Deddy, and his son plays for the Suns. Yes. Coach Knapp's daddy. Yeah. Coached the boy's daddy, and he right. starts for the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You yeah. heard it here first. Yeah. That's why it. you subscribe. Hit the subscribe <laughs> button on the bottom of the screen, 
you get this kind of news here. You don't get this everywhere, guys. I mean, no, I mean, and a lot of people will never know that. And you know, you're going to be watching Florida this year now, and Emory Jones is good. And at some point, you're going to say his coach in high school was Gillis's quarterback in the ninth grade. Yeah. When in '89, he was Randall Kerbo. That's his bot name. Kerbo. Yeah, I remember Kerbo. That. His daddy was the coach at Gillsville. Seems like they, Sean telling me. I've yeah, heard that. Well, him. Sean knows all yeah. about this. Sean knows it. I remember him telling me that. And Randall ended up finishing at Bowden High School, which is over in uh, Carroll County, Georgia. But uh, I just thought that was interesting. That's yeah. a rabbit hole, but that's interesting. That's good stuff. Hit the subscribe. <laughs> Ring that little bell on YouTube, Spotify, guys, if you're listening. Subscribe, man. You get this kind of stuff every week. We're going to be off next week again. Yeah. We'll be back full force the week after. And uh, uh, Spotify, YouTube, Google Cast, uh, about anywhere you want to listen, uh, you can definitely uh, uh, find us somewhere. Thomas Cruz wants to know if we want to referee some high school football. No, thanks, Thomas. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be at the games covering and watching, <laughs> and I don't want to get cussed out by I can't. Them. Boy, they just, they, they got to they gotta be tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, I mean, uh, and I've refereed hundreds of games from from the fence. Right, right, <laughs> right. And fence. I told them what they did wrong, and, of course, I've done all that stuff. And uh, But in all honesty, you know, it it is hard. I'm going to tell one story, and it, this may be funny, it may not, but I was refereeing down at the church one time. They used basketball. to have that basketball. Yeah. And, uh, you know, come on, good environment. Little kids, and I accidentally blew my whistle. And, you know, at the time, I'm like, and I just look at the guys, I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, that was an accident. And the coach in this church league looked at me and said, if you keep the dang thing out of your mouth, you won't accidentally blow it. So, <laughs> so I realize, I know what refs have to go through. I mean, and that was an accident. Yeah. So, I can imagine what y'all go through. Uh, well, uh, being a high school football referee throwing flags on purpose? Yeah. yeah. I know. I mean. It's the same thing. If you can complain about it, and but until you, if you want to step up and say and do something about it, then volunteer your time to do it. You know, otherwise, you know, uh, if you always got something to say about how bad things are, then make a difference. Mm -hmm. Be a part of the difference. Walk it like you talk it. Uh, like Marcus did with the garbage pickup. Mm -hmm. Guy had something to say. Don't worry about it. If you want to make a difference, you go make do something about it. Right, right. We wanted more attention for the county. We wanted to shoot the breeze about college uh, ball on our own, so we started up our own show. Mm -hmm. We get more attention for the county. We get to hang out and talk about college ball. Yeah, for we free. Enjoy it. Yeah, volunteer. So if, you know, people can go out there and call some high school football games. Oh gosh, I mean, which I jump. I mean, I, I, I get mad at refs too. Oh, I know. Like, but if you get caught sleeping on one play. Mm -hmm. Man, and the parent, you got some parent that, that kind of knows the game, understand what's going on, and you, mm -hmm. you catch them on it. Boy, you you know. Uh, well, really, the only time in my pet peeve when it comes to referee, and then I don't know that it's any one referee. Don't be a homer. Don't, I hate when the home team gets a lot of yeah. advantages. Well, that, too. And sometimes, and that's probably not the ref's fault, but they get blamed They're for scared it. of the of the fans. Well, there's a lot of stalls in plays. And, you know, like I've been at football games before, and there have been like an eight-minute break. You know, they're talking. Yeah, let's There's get a, it going. So I don't know. I don't know. But any stoppage in play. But that's not necessarily the referee's fault. I mean, that could be a timeout or whatever. Yeah, and the homers, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, when you get that, that one yard on. spotted, every time they put the ball down up there at Red Bay, every time mm -hmm. they move the ball one yard. Every time. Thomas seems like a good one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we try to call it fair and, and just do the right thing yeah. and the, the best team, let the best team win. Uh, they're kids, let them play the game. And But it's definitely not easy. No. We'll move into, since so we're talking about high school, and we'll get off here. We've got just a few minutes left. Uh, Dane, this is something I run across the other day. These are just top football players in the state of Alabama. All right, this is high school. Right? Uh, yeah, and these are not really in a, a, any particular kind of order. Really, uh, so we'll see. We'll start right here. All right. Now, is this the top? This is high school football. Yeah, we'll right? say we'll start at number fifteen. Uh, of course, it's got to be mentioned. Six foot two, two hundred fifteen pound, twenty twenty two graduate, Zach P. Ryan, quarterback, Pennsylvania Valley. Wow, what a career! Now, this has got to be a good list if he's coming in at fifteen. Yeah. Uh, he's been part of the three straight championship teams. He had two at five and one at Pennsylvania Valley. 
Send me that later. Okay. Um, Alexander's the guy that we've talked to, Ronnie, Ronnie Royal. Royal. I reached out to him a little bit and just told him we were watching. Uh, and, you know, uh, keep working hard. Now he has to transfer. <laughs> yes, he's got a lot of talent. So we're looking forward to seeing Mr. Royal play again this year. Gulf Shores. Yeah, he's moved on down south to the beach. Uh, he's at Gulf Shores. He's 5'10", 175. He's class of 2024. Offers include Florida State, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and UAB. Uh, net worthy Max Prep National Freshman of the Year. Transfer from Alexander Gulf Shores, as, wow. as, as Todd just mentioned. Now, this is a guy we just talked about a while ago. Uh, I've seen pictures, and uh, Bo and the guys have talked to them. Jaden Lewis yeah. causes a fumble up against Walter Welburn last year. He plays a uh, he's D back up there at Aniston. Uh, he's one of the reasons. Yes. Supposed to be so good this year. Yep, six foot one seventy five, class of twenty four. Looks like Florida State, which we've seen some pictures of him uh, in UAB. Uh-huh. Interested in him. Uh, noteworthy, Lewis helped the Bulldogs to a second round playoff appearance uh, in twenty twenty. They lost to Bibb County 29-28. I remember listening to that score wow. coming home somewhere, and I was just uh, – 29-28. Yeah. Spartman wide receiver uh, Cameron Foley. Uh, Florence defensive back Jaylee Hurley. Uh, reach out for a pass. It's got a picture of him that Florence playing at Spartman. Hurley's the D back at Florence, 6'2", 170, class of 2023. Uh, Bama, Auburn, Florida State, Georgia, LSU, Miami, Michigan, Penn State. All the big schools are offering this young man. He plays at Florence. Uh, y'all keep your eye on him this year down there. Justin Finkley, guy plays at Hewitt Trust. We mentioned a while ago, 6'2", 255. Uh, yeah, I mean, big guy, fast. He plans to attend medical school and hopes to become a surgeon uh-huh. as a career. So, I don't think football's uh, going to make or break him. No, good luck to him on that, and uh, he can do it just – he gets into work and it'd be great uh, football open a door for him to get a scholarship yeah. you know and of course yeah. academics yeah. too uh, the young man could have a, a great future up there that's at Hewitt Trustful Finkley the defensive lineman uh, A.J. Harris defensive back at Glenwood School 6'2 180 he's uncommitted he's got offers from everybody on the list uh, I don't know where Glenwood School is played defensive back a wide receiver return kicks for Glenwood in 2020 He's the only IASA player on the oh, list. Oh, okay. He plays in the – he don't play in the HSA. He plays right. in the – okay. That's the why I didn't know where Glenwood – Some private. Was. Yeah, private yeah. Christian school. Yeah. Okay. My bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Curtis Perry plays at Park Crossing. Uh, 6A All-State selection. He's on committee. He's got offers from all the big schools, from Nebraska, Bama, Auburn, Arizona State. Uh, class of 2022. And, of course, this guy here, everybody knows, uh, Taquan Fagan. Did he not play at Oxford? Yeah. Uh, he transferred from Oxford to Thompson. I think that's right, yeah. I mean, I, tell us, Bo. I, I transferred thought... from Oxford to Thompson this huh. summer. There was some, some stuff online, uh, some pretty nasty comments, and I spoke to some other people that cover that area mm-hmm. about the conversation, and it was um, just kind of rude to the mother. And when you're talking about people's mama, you need to be careful. Uh, no matter what's going on or if somebody says he got this or somebody says he got that, let's remember uh, he's a he's a kid, he's a young man, and uh, he decided to, to move on. So let's not cry over spilt milk. And I'm, I'm sure Oxford's bothered that they lost a, an awesome player. Well, I would think so. That's going to be committed to Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Miami, Oklahoma. He's 6'2", 181. He's class of 22. Well, I mean, and – I guess nobody from Thompson watches our show, I wouldn't think. That's awful odd. You go from Oxford to Thompson. Yeah, I'd say something. But, of course, they won't investigate it. But something. Yeah, and no matter, and it probably, you know, but whatever it is, let's just don't be ugly to people's mama. Mama, no. Yeah, that's just not. I mean, you're talking about, well, she got a new car. She, I mean, and then she come on the post. I'm reading this. Mm-hmm. And she was just, you know, and I didn't. I don't want to get in the middle of it because just it's still you just need to be respectful. Hey, you don't blame the kid for it; you blame the adults. I'm well, not talking about his mother. No, this there's about whoever all people that's involved and things like that. And good luck to him; they're going to have a great season, and we'll definitely keep keeping our eye on him. He's a fantastic player. Yes, he is. Uh, the kid out at Williams, Robert Woodyard, six one two ten, plays linebacker out there. He's committed to Bama. He led Williams in twenty and four A state basketball title. Wow. Uh, Robert Woodyard is blessed with the wow factor. 
there's no doubt this guy really has the, the stuff to go play at another level. So be looking for him to be dressed in the crimson jerseys mm-hmm. in another year or two. This guy here is committed to Florida. He's from Faith Academy, which we've heard of them. Shamar James, 6'3", 212, also a linebacker. He's committed to Florida. Uh-huh. Uh, he's had 70 tackles on defense as a junior. James also caught 35 passes, 473 yards, eight touchdowns, and rushed for 268 yards and five touchdowns. Uh-huh. Uh, and that league where they play it down there, that's that's going to be really good. Uh, Geneva County, uh, Emmanuel Henderson, uh, tailback. He's committed to play at Alabama. Last name Henderson. He's going to be wow. a guy to keep Geneva your eyes County. on. Yeah. Now, somebody told me that they Emmanuel Henderson coach in Geneva County. Uh, they run a four three five. Wow! How many yards he has? He's six say? one one eighty five. Um, it don't give he his, don't give his yardage. Oh, we can find that somewhere. They said he was at a Bama camp. He was four he, three five. He was playing with some of the, the freshmen at Bama at a camp. Wow. Like he was Geneva. Camp. Like I mean, you, you couldn't tell a lot of difference between him and these freshmen at Bama. You see what I'm saying? I want to check something here. Why you're Emmanuel Henderson? Uh, great looking young man. Well, they they. I mean, he looks like a Tank Bigsby guy. He, he's just muscled all over, and you tell. He gets after it. 6'1", 185, 4, 3, 5. Yeah, I'd say he's the fastest guy in the state. Tony Mitchell, another Thompson guy, makes a list. 6'2", 180. He's going to be class of 23. Uh, he's another defensive back. He's got offers from everywhere, from Arkansas, Auburn, Bama, Tennessee. He's part of two straight Class 7A championship teams with the Warriors up there at Thompson. Wow. And we'll finish the top three off of this, and we'll get off here and let you guys go sit on the porch and watch the rain. <laughs> And uh, NBA finals, Smith. Uh, he's from Carver, Montgomery, James, 632.95. Currently, number six overall prospect in the nation for the class of 2023. Uh, they just said the guys at, at the Auburn and uh, Bama camps just said this guy can wreck a practice, really. He'll just make a big mess of stuff. He's just he's fast, quick to itch, gets his hands on people real fast. So, uh, James Smith, defensive line from Carver, Montgomery, that's number uh, three. Uh, defensive stop at the Cranton Bowl in Montgomery back August two years ago. They defeated Greenville 19-13 to uh, thanks to Mickey Welsh from Montgomery Advisory for the pitchers and the comments. Number two, Peter Woods, also from Thompson. Uh, we're getting a trend here. I'm starting to see something happen here. Yeah, has been anybody from Thompson on there? Defensive lineman, 6'4 and a half, 260 pounds, class of 23. Of course, he's got offers from everywhere. Uh, looks like he's going. He did some practice drills, work out up at Thompson. Uh, they had a camp back in June mm-hmm. um, through preps.com. Got some picture stuff up on here. I'll repost this on the page. I put it out there last week one day. Oh my God! Don't tell me number one's from Thompson too. Number one, uh, he's from Thompson. Oh, wow. Jeremiah Alexander. He's going to be your age guy. I read about from? this guy. I think Thompson. <laughs> and guess where he's committed to play at? Alabama. Yes. So uh, we're finding a trend here. One time Alabama commit who decommitted last fall. The Tide still may be a leader for him. Uh, I think I've heard that Auburn may be in the mix down there. They're trying to, to get him. So we're going to stop on one there. question right now. If Thompson wins it this year and somebody says why, yeah, you just, just say, well, they got four of the top 15 players in the state. Refer to this show on July the 17th, <laughs> 2021. And Big Matt and Diamond Dean just broke Four. down. And number one, I'm play defense. I don't think they're going to be giving up a whole lot of yards. I'm surprised Tay Meadows is not on there. Game 2,600 yards, led his team to the state championship. It's almost like 4A and below. It's just. I'm going to send that to you right I now. I don't know. They don't get to. I'll, I'll share that back out on the I page. I like the fact that Meadows is not on there. Do I, you? Well, you know, it is what it is. Right, of course, 15 <laughs> players out of no telling how many plays. Thank you, sir. I'll put that back on. I had this out there a couple of days ago, and I'll, I'll put it. Sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll put that back out on the page again. And uh, okay. people, if y'all listening on Spotify, go on our Facebook page, uh, and type in Matt and Todd Show Side Notes, and uh, you can find all kind of news. I plug stuff up there, usually four or five articles a day, something on high school or college, or sometimes yes, some baseball you do stuff, a, good job a little bitty NBA stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, we appreciate everybody. Uh, hanging out with us today, our YouTube followers, the page is growing, and uh, all right, I'm, I'm looking up something on this Geneva County running back. It's gonna be a 
be a busy week, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's gonna yeah, be hot. Yeah. It's gonna Sounds be kind of like it's gonna be a rainy kind of all week. So, heck, when big weeks get busy, I just am going back to work. Really, <laughs> we'll see how it all rolls out. And uh, again, hey, we thank our sponsors: Warrior Gym, Scott Lloyd, mm-hmm. Kevin Stars with Lawn Landscape, and of course Warrior Gym. Uh, we got some new sponsors maybe coming on when, Hope foot, so. when football season kicks off. You may see some new sponsors coming up on here. Uh, anybody like to sponsor us here? Uh, sponsor us with uh, food cards, the twenty dollar cards. Yes. We're yes. going to give them to to players as they become player of the week. We're going we're going to give those out. And the money we've been getting, we've been putting up to maybe buy trophies at the end of the year. And our players of the year, you know, we'll have a little thing somewhere. I'm still working on that. I got some good ideas, and I got some uh, dinner thing that I may be able to do. Uh-huh. We'll find out with that towards the end of the year, and uh, uh, that'd be great. Then. Yeah, you know, kids like to eat. They like yeah. going out and eat nice. We'll know? just have the players from you know a few players from the schools come out, and we'll have some more trophies. So, uh, anybody like to sponsor the show? Uh, you know, uh, well, if you got a business, we'll throw your name up there. Or if you just want to be unanimous and you just want to donate some mm-hmm. some cards, you can go Walmart and buy them and. I'll stack them up and we'll keep them up. Uh, and when it gets that time, yeah, you don't even have to tell who you are. You know, yeah, without... yeah, just we just do it for the kids. Give them a little acknowledgement. Player of the week. Here's your food card. They can go have dinner on us. And uh, so anyway, I got found a little bit. Let me leave y'all with this. Yeah. Hold on. All right. Uh, Emmanuel Henderson. All right. Despite missing three games last year due to injury, he finished with 1,447 yards on 147 carries. As a sophomore, though, he rushed for 2,000 yards, 46 touchdowns, and had six returns for touchdowns. Hmm. So, yeah, I think he's got the goods. Well. So he's already rushed for 4,000 yards, and he scored 80 touchdowns, you know, in three years. So, pretty he'll, good career. Yeah, he'll, he'll, make a, he'll make some statements down there at Bama, too. Yeah, I would think. I've, just, I've never heard of a player coming out of Geneva County, and uh, I think it's a 4A, maybe a 5. But that's interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. All right, guys. All right. We'll catch y'all uh, next week, and uh, we hope everybody's going to. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week, and we love you. And as always, keep your heads clear and keep your hearts full of God, as always. All right. Peace out. Good week.